It says I'm pregnant. Where? <laughs> there. Are you stitching me up? No, I just took it. Really? Yes. Oh, so Look, it's moving Whoa. its hands and feet. Oh. Say cheese. <laughs> Say Asia's pregnant. Asia's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> yeah. You won. <laughs> Stop. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Asia's officially <laughs> nine weeks pregnant. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Here we come, sweetheart. You're doing okay. so well. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, yeah. The little feel for his hat. It's really good. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> He's about to rotate. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. If you haven't been to my channel before, hello. I'm Asia. I had a baby. Hello. Oh, oops. It's probably gonna throw up on me. Oh no, it's spinning up on me. Do you feel better now? Action. Our baby was due in the beginning of this year, 2021. We went to the birth center for our last visit before they start talking about natural ways to help you induce the baby. And we bought something called a tincture. I didn't know what tinctures were at the time. It's basically like an herbal remedy that was made by a midwife in San Francisco called Ripen. I took that that evening and my doula recommended we go for a hike to kind of get things moving. So we went to do this hike in San Francisco called Land's End. Are you ready to be a dad? Uh, yeah. It has a labyrinth in it which has come up a lot in the preparation I did. We talk about it at the birth center as well. There's only one way in and one way out. It's different than a maze. I thought they were the same, but not. Walking the labyrinth is kind of like a metaphor for what labor is. It was a really nice way to end the pregnancy, so I'm glad my doula recommended it. Shout out to Lauren. Then, I think the thing that really got things going, there were probably 200 steps leading from the labyrinth back up to the car park, and as I was walking up, I felt something change in my hips. I had been hiking basically the whole end of my pregnancy because I wanted him to come a little bit earlier. <laughs> He's a big baby. He was measuring 100th percentile. Even though I'm tall, I'm, I have pretty narrow hips, so I was very nervous about him going past his guest date. But I was trying to just kind of be chill about things. Then I took the tincture that evening and I went to sleep. Then at 1 a.m. I wake up. I had multiple experiences where I had practice contractions or Braxton Hicks contractions throughout the pregnancy, but this definitely felt different. And I remember my doula, she said, when you're in labor, you'll know, and it's true. Like it's very different than Braxton Hicks. And I, I thought it was gonna be hard to tell, but you can tell. I, I had a numbness in my leg and it was just like a dull pain. It just wasn't going away. So I was like, oh my gosh, I think this is it. And I texted my doula. I texted the midwives at the birth center and I was like, I think I'm in labor. <laughs> the advice that they had given us was as soon as you are in early labor, you could be in for the long haul. So like eat as much as you can. <laughs> I didn't eat that much, but I ate some peanut butter toast and some berries, and I tried to go back to sleep, but I wasn't really that tired. I waited to wake up Hugh, my husband, until 4 a.m. What's wrong, bud? You wanna go down? All right, Mr. you're being ejected. <laughs> no, he's being ejected. Ejected from the facility. 4 a.m. is when I decided to wake up Hugh. I didn't want to wake him up because he's such a heavy sleeper and he really likes having like 10 hours, or liked, we don't get that much sleep anymore. But he really enjoyed having 10 hours of sleep before we had a baby. So I tried to wait as long as possible, but around 4 a.m. I was like, oh, things are really happening. I'm feeling some movement and I need to get some support because I'm starting to feel a little bit more intensive contraction. So I wake him up, it was really exciting. I was asked of him for when I was in early labor, I wanted a charcuterie board. I had heard all these things from different people that they wish they had prepared a lot of snacks for when they were labor because I thought I was going to be super hungry since I was doing such an extreme physical activity. So he like bought me this like really nice wouldn't, let me go get it. Charcuterie board for Christmas. He prepared the whole thing with all of these different snacks, but 
by that point, my body was already like ejecting things. I ate like two carrots and some cheese and I threw it up. I hate throwing up. I know no one really likes it, but I seriously, it's just like a big fear of mine. I heard it was really common to throw up in early labor, but I wasn't super worried because I didn't throw up in the first trimester. I did have nausea. It just sort of happened and <laughs> I threw up three times. Luckily, I didn't throw up the peanut butter toasty I had or the um, berries and things I ate at 1 a.m., but I did throw up the carrots and the cheese that Hugh prepared for me on this beautiful charcuterie board that I asked for and didn't touch after that point. Apparently, the two are completely unrelated. You cannot throw up in your first trimester and still throw up in labor. I kind of felt like this is what I have to do to get stuff out of my body, and my midwives were explaining your body is focusing on this one task birthing this baby. Your digestion is like, not. we don't have time to be digesting. So that's why it's really important to eat as much as you can before your labor progresses, progresses too much. Yeah, bud. I also thought that I was going to be at the house for a while. I was timing my contractions and they were coming really steadily. There was a pattern. They weren't sporadic anymore. Birth center and my doula both said it's really common for when you have your first labor, things slow down around sunrise. The plan was to monitor and see if that happens before assuming that things are just going to keep moving. The sun is rising, things are getting more intense, my birth is not slowing down. Yeah, was progressing very quickly into active labor and I was like, whoa, this is not as slow as I thought it would be. Hugh messaged my doula and he was in communications with the birth center so I wasn't really talking to anyone anymore at that point saying, hey, I think things are picking up here. It's going pretty quickly. One tip I have for partners, make sure that you have the contractions app on your phone and maybe do a trial run where you practice timing contractions because when everything's happening, if it's just you and your partner, which it was with us in the pandemic, it was just me and Hugh in the house. A lot was falling on him. I thought I needed him to give me support physically through trying to do some of the exercises that we learned in our birthing class. I wanted his support in preparing snacks for me. I wanted his support in talking to my doula and talking to my midwife. That monitoring contractions, it kind of just fell to the wayside. Hugh didn't have the app on his phone and it turned out that I was actually having contractions very close together, but they weren't being timed <laughs> appropriately. So the time period between when you're at home doing early labor at home to when you're supposed to be at the birth center, it felt like it went by really quickly. Um, yeah, and then Contractions are still manageable. Yeah, I'm dancing through them. So I was like listening to Drake and stuff because I love Drake. After the contractions started getting closer together, I was like, nah, no more music. Some of the things that helped when I was at home, getting in the shower. You're not supposed to get in the tub when you're at home because it can slow down the labor. But I got in the shower. Oh my goodness, it felt so nice just to be in there. It was such a relief. I stood in there until the hot water ran out. thought I needed to go to the hospital. I was like, this baby is coming now here. We are in active labor, all systems go. We're not going to make it to birth center. But one thing that my doula had recommended is we'll just have the philosophy go to the birth center first, and then you can go to the hospital if you need to. Why did I choose to give birth at a birth center? There were basically three options in my mind. One, I could give birth at home. This was in the middle of the COVID pandemic. So a lot of women were starting to think, oh, I'm gonna give birth at home instead of at a hospital because hospitals were really impacted by COVID. Before even the pandemic, I was considering doing a home birth or a birth center birth, but I considered doing a hospital. I decided against it because I'm a big believer in your product of your environment. And I really wanted to try and do as natural birth as possible. And I know that at the hospital, there's so many options for interventions and things. And I was just trying to prevent myself from going that route because knowing me, I would be like, oh, no, give me the epidural, give me all this stuff. Um, I also considered doing a home birth. And at the time I was living in an apartment that was very noise sensitive. I, we got a couple of complaints. If you guys know the apartment, I sh actually there's a tour. You should watch the apartment tour. You can hear, I mean, I didn't think we were loud in there, but we did get a couple of noise complaints. It may have been from some of my singing. It's not for everyone. I was thinking if they didn't like my singing, they're probably gonna not like me screaming at home. So we decided to do the birth center. So we actually toured the birth center before the pandemic uh, in early January and I loved it. It has two beautiful rooms. 
that are set up for, they're just made for a birth. You get to give birth on a really big bed, like your partner can be on the bed with you, and there's a tub, there's a shower. They have all of the medical equipment tucked away so that you don't feel like you're in a hospital. It just feels like you're at a home. Anyway, back to the birth story. That was a big tangent. Finally, it's to a point where like my water is breaking. So we call the doula. As she's on her way, she calls and she asks to hear me going through a contraction. She's like, oh, Asia's in active labor. We need to go to the birth center because I'm making cooing noises. I sound more animal than anything. I read this book called Transformed by Birth, which was recommended by our midwife at the birth center. That book was so good. I highly recommend reading it. I listened to the audiobook, be driving to hikes and things in the last trimester, and I found it really helpful. I recommended listening to it with your partner. Hugh listened to parts of it, but I listened to all of it on my own. It really helped me mentally prepare for doing a birth at the birth center. There's one main point in there about sound, just letting your body make the noises that it naturally wants to make when you're in labor using sound to go through the contractions. That was probably the best tool. I remember doing a lot of prep with holding the ice cubes and they would be like, okay, now breathe through them, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't, I really don't reckon that helped me. <laughs> the best thing for me was knowing that I could use my voice to get through contractions, but everyone's different. Things that they recommend is to try and keep the sounds low, like who, like, low vocalization flow. So apparently I was in active labor. We live kind of far from the birth center. Having a shorter drive would have been nice, but one of the ways I cope having a long drive, I had the windows down. My eyes were closed at this point. I had my head out the window the whole time. It was actually nice to have the breeze on my face. It was a nice distraction. We get to the birth center. The midwife that I was on call when I was going into labor happened to be the one that was always on call when I would text them. So throughout the pregnancy, the birth center gives you a phone number you can text and ask questions. I probably used it a bit too much, <laughs> but they always responded and they're really nice and really sweet and they helped a lot with my prep for giving birth. Because when I had texted, it always ended up being Alana who had been on call at the time. So it was a fun coincidence that she was also my midwife um, during the birth. One thing I think would have been helpful, having your partner know how to do counter pressure like on your back. Once I got to the birth center, my midwife did that when I was going through contraction and that really helped. I took for granted how much something like that would have been beneficial because I had learned all of these different positions for me to be in and we had practiced some that he could do as support but it's kind of hard to remember them all in the moment. Maybe if we had printed out a sheet or something. So we ended up getting to the person around 11 a.m. Then we'd get into the lobby, it's all happening. A UPS guy was like trying to get in the elevator and they're like, come on the way. We ran into the elevator and went up to the birth center. I needed to have, I heard that the tub was like nature's epidural. One thing I recommend is if you're planning on doing the tub, give the birth center a heads up when you're on your way so that they can fill it up and make sure it's hot. I don't know how hot it's allowed to be, but I think I could have had a hotter tub than I originally thought. I was like, oh, I don't know, this seems like it might be too hot, but now in retrospect, I'm like, no, it should be hotter. And I think I actually preferred the shower to the tub because it's just like constant hot water. I was breathing and breathing and pushing. Or Hugh was whispering in my ear, like, this is just incredible. And I was like, what? Like, what am I doing? That's incredible. <laughs> the birth center was amazing. I felt like I had so many people around me who were supporting me. I used this tone that is just so nurturing and so lovely to hear when you're in labor. It was all just so calm. There wasn't any rushing or urgency. And everyone was like, that's how you do it, Asia. They kept saying that's the way, and I was loving it. <laughs> One of the things that was awesome is my doula had a playlist of her own and it was like yoga music, which was amazing. I don't think I would have thought to play that. It was words, but I couldn't really understand them. It was so nice because I didn't really notice the passing of time. I tried listening to Drake at one point when I was pushing and it was so distracting for me because I know all the lyrics to all of the songs. It's taking me out of the moment. I was like, oh wait, it's only been one song. I don't even know where it cut off. Oh. 
I get to a point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore, apparently. I don't remember. Did I say that here? Yeah. You just thought I can't do this anymore. And apparently that yeah. means you're about to do it. Yeah, that's when the midwife's like, oh, I mean, this is really close. And it was, it was like an hour later. Though. Yeah. Apparently that means you're really close. My doula had a little honey stick. And that was incredible. I ate that and it really revived my energy. So highly recommend getting some honey sticks. Yeah, so I get out of the tub when I say I can't do it anymore, apparently, so that. It had me switch positions. I have a contraction. Like, while I'm getting out of the tub, he was holding me. I'm like, ah, this is so painful. And then I get onto the bed, which I wasn't expecting to give birth on the bed, but you just like, you never know what's gonna happen. So I'm on the bed in the most traditional position, like just giving birth on my back, which I thought I was gonna be doing something more, I don't know, different, but I didn't. I was so nervous about this thing called the ring of fire where you feel full opening. I really have any issues with that because they put like warm cloths and stuff on me when I was in the final stages of labor. All the things I was afraid of, they weren't an issue at all. It's just so, so exciting to meet your baby after going through all of it. So I had a dream a month beforehand that I reached out and I felt my baby's head and it was just so surreal uh, in the dream. I was like, this is the best, this is so exciting, I can't believe it. During the labor, I remember I was pushing and pushing and I'm just like giving it my all, pushing. And you said there was one point where the head, it was going in and out, the head kept coming, peeking out and coming back in, peeking out and coming back in. And finally the head came out. And my doula was like, Asia, if you reach down, you'll feel your baby's head. And I was like, are you kidding? I was just so, so happy. I couldn't believe it. it was like a dream. His hair was all wet, so it was curly. It's curly when it's wet. And they were like, he has curly hair like mama. And I was like, just bawling. <laughs> I wasn't crying tears, I was just sobbing without tears. And I reached out, it's just the most incredible, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about I'm getting emotional because it's just the most incredible feeling. <laughs> I can't describe it, it's just the best. And so I have to do one more push to get him out. And he came out. And then I birthed the placenta probably 10 minutes later. It was fine. So after that, they gave us like an hour with the baby. We have what they call golden hour where you just sort of are doing skin to skin with the baby, chilling. I wouldn't have changed anything. It was the best day of my life. No, it doesn't sound like it after I say all of this. <laughs> it's not how painful it was, but it's definitely manageable. But I think that's it. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much for listening to my birth story. If you're a little too nervous to do a home birth, but you want to try and do as natural a birth as possible, I highly recommend going the birth center route. I felt really supported throughout my pregnancy, but especially during the labor. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel. Okay, bye. <laughs>